I don't like diagnoses. I take them away from almost every patient that comes in. Sometimes I have to fight with patients to get rid of them. Because people like to hang on to things that they think are medical terminology. I mentioned narcotic overuse, side effects, constipation, sedation, nausea and vomiting, and the worst one really is respiratory depression. And now when we have a person who's in hospice, who's about to die at some point certain, we will often increase their narcotics to slow down their breathing process to allow them to die with dignity. Is that uh, euthanasia? Not really. We're doing pain control, but at the same time, when you use a narcotic, the muscles are relaxing and the breathing apparatus starts to shut down. When I say we, that's not me, but I mean it is done. Doctors do that. What is prolotherapy? To me, prolotherapy is absolutely magic. It worked with me overnight, the first time I had it done, which was on my wrist. I had a golf injury, um, hit the ground, very high speed. I'm trying to hit the ball, but I hit the ground. I was trying to get the ball to go up in the air over a tree. So the more you hit down on a ball, the higher it goes. So that was, I watched a, a video on it, and I went out to the golf course and I tried it. Well, it didn't work real well. And my hand hyperextended backwards, had severe wrist pain for many months, I uh, was told I needed surgery, didn't want to get surgery, and then I was at a medical convention, and I was convinced to get a sugar shot in my wrist. That's prolotherapy. It's a sugar shot. Can that work? No, it can't work, can it? How can injecting sugar help anything? Sugar's bad for us, isn't it? <laughs> well, sugar works as what we call an osmotic shock agent. It doesn't have to be sugar that we use for prolotherapy. It's one of the many proliferants in our arsenal. I use sugar mainly, which we call dextrose, it's pharmaceutical grade mixed with lidocaine, to inject into the areas of pain, tears in the meniscus or the rotator cuff, all the way up the neck, down the back, uh, the knees, every joint really in the body, from headaches back of the head will hit. Um, so what are we doing when we do this process? It's the injection of an irritant into the joint or where the ligaments and tendons attach to the bone. Now, if someone has a muscle spasm in their back, it's not that part of the muscle that I'm going to go to to create the healing. I'm going to go to what's called the enthesis, which means where does that muscle or where does that tendon, where does that ligament actually attach to the bone? So has anyone here ever had a trigger point injection? You have. They don't work. Oh, no, I had trigger points. I didn't do anything about it. Okay, okay. Trigger point injections don't work because what we do when we do trigger point injections is we just haphazardly inject some lidocaine or something into a muscle to try to relax it. It will numb the area up for a few hours and then the pain comes back. We need to get back to the enthesis and sometimes those entheses are very deep in the body. Sometimes I, I need to use a four inch needle to get down to where we're going. Prolotherapy we know about since the beginning of time. It was used, not called prolotherapy, but in Chinese medicine they would take acupuncture needles, heat them up, and inject them in the low back, what does that do? It causes scarring. We're made out of collagen. Our whole body is made out of collagen. We're going to get to the different types in a little while. Collagen is the structural protein of the body. It's in our hair. It's in our skin. It's in our eyes. It's in our bones. And what we do with prolotherapy is we inject it around the ligaments, around the tendons, into the joints, anywhere we want to stimulate collagen or cartilage growth. Why do we want to do that? We want to rejuvenate that area to its pre-injury or overuse state. So we know that Hippocrates introduced heated metal probes into the dislocated and painful joints of javelin showers, uh, throwers because they're, they kept doing this, you know, big, big extension back, big throw, it would loosen up the ligaments in the shoulder. They would sometimes dislocate. So he would take a rod, put it in a bonfire, and scald the axilla, the armpit. I'm sure that wasn't a lot of fun for the patient. And it would scar up. They would lose range of motion. They couldn't do this as far, but the shoulder wouldn't dislocate. As surgeons, we still do that, but we use a fine needle, heat it up, put it in the shoulder, and shrink the, the collagen capsule that's around the joint. George Hackett was a doctor in Chicago in the 30s, 40s, 50s who was very famous for prolotherapy. 
He injected and studied thousands and thousands of people. So he considered the problem to be ligaments and tendons that were injured or actually what he called relaxed, meaning they were loosened up. Now we know that when a woman has a baby, there's high estrogen and the ligaments relax so the baby can come out through the pelvis. A lot of women get back pain during their pregnancy because the ligaments are loosening up, things aren't fitting together right, and the, the back starts to hurt. This is very common. The bread and butter for prolotherapy is the low back. The iliolumbar ligament, which is where those little dimples are in the back, is the bread and butter. There's, the most people we see are for low back pain. It's not for herniated discs. We get people that come with herniated discs, but it's mostly that ligament that is sprained. What is a sprain? Anybody know? Tissue normally might look like this, my two hands together. When it's sprained, like you sprain an ankle, it gets stretched out a little bit. What we call a grade four sprain might be a tear, but it's the same idea. The tissue is stretching out. So what does prolotherapy we do? We irritate the tissue. We stimulate the immune system to bring fibroblasts to the area where the injury is and the collagen is deposited by fibroblasts, which are cells that are sequestered to that area by the immune system. So those fibroblasts built us, and what we do with prolotherapy is we give the body a second chance to heal. So we have an injury. Most of it that I see is to dense collagen, which is fibrous tissue. It doesn't have a very good blood supply. We call it avascular. So it doesn't heal very good. When we're young, it seems to heal up. Then we get into our 50s and 60s, and a lot of these injuries we had when we were kids start to come back one, one by one. Anyone ever have that experience? You hurt yourself when you were young. It kind of healed up. You forgot about it for 20 or 30 or 40 years. And like, where did that come from today? How many people here have pain in more than one part of their body? Lots. Now, typically, when I ask a crowd how many people have pain, it's usually over 50%. The statistics in this country are about one-third of people are in chronic pain. But all the groups that I talk to, it's over 50%. That's a lot of people. That's doctors, too. When I, when I lecture to doctors, more than half the crowd raises their hand. So George Hackett was the guy that got this started in more of the modern sense of what we're doing. And he believed that repairing connective tissues could resolve most of the pain. That's my belief also. That's my experience after many thousands of people that I've worked with over the years. So what is it? Injection ingredients for prolotherapy consist of compounds that alleviate chronic pain. To trigger the healing process, clinicians use mild chemical irritants such as phenol. It's a very strong alcohol. You wouldn't really like that injected, but it does a great job because it hurts a little bit. Tannic acid, many other things which we'll get into. After injection, these substances attach to cell walls to stimulate the body's reactive healing process. So what I'm doing if I inject you is I am creating a mini injury. Sounds crazy, right? Because you're walking in and you say, this area in my shoulder is really inflamed. And I go, I want to inflame it more. And I'm going to show you why with another slide soon. We use sodium moruate when people are refractory to healing with dextrose because it's much more power, powerful. It's a cod liver oil extract, and it has a tendency to burn the tissue a little bit. I've done it on myself. I didn't like it much, but it sure works great. So we often will just press on an area to see if that area is the one that is causing the pain. So if you have parts of your body that every once in a while you have to rub and go, oh, that really hurts right there, that's a spot that prolotherapy should work for. When I say should, there's no healing modality that heals everyone. I wish there were. We get about 80 to 90% success rate, which is higher than anything else I know. But we still have failures with it, just like anything else. The failures, most of the time, are patient-controlled. It's people that are taking anti-inflammatory medicine. What am I trying to do with prolotherapy? I'm trying to inflame the area. So if you take an anti-inflammatory, it blunts the healing response. The body naturally inflames itself to create a healing response. Does that make sense? When we take an anti-inflammatory, what are we doing? We're blocking the natural healing process. We will feel better because it takes away some of the pain, 
right gets rid of some of the inflammation some of the